Hey everybody, this is round three of the Perils of the Lost Coast scenario. The Poison Pill? Is that what it's called? Yeah, the Poison Pill. So, I had to retcon something last scenario where I forgot to scry at the end of Harsk's turn. So then he sc he scryed and saw the villain. So I'm 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 intentionally forestalling the final showdown with this villain uh because I felt like it. it it was a little bit of a cheat but I felt like because Harsk would have known that that was the villain I didn't feel too bad about it it's really uh the, the, the my fault for forgetting the the steps the the end turn steps and that's fine um the 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 question is now what I want to do so I got Kira who has now closed uh, the general store. She's now in the town square. And because I've got a character in the town square, if Harsk does indeed turn this card over, then the end game essentially is triggered because she'll try to close that location. She might fail. Let's find out what she has to do to close. She has to do a... She has to banish a card. Okay, she will not fail. She will be able to close that location. And then Harsk will go up against the villain. He could fail. Like, an 11 against this guy could could fail. Um, Harsk has some pretty good bonuses and a good, you know, reliable... He's got a bonus from his armor, his magical armor, or I guess it's magical. He's got a bonus from his crossbow, and he's got an ally that he acquired who all he has to do is recharge for yet another D4. So I... And a blessing that he could expend for a, an extra bonus. So I... I don't think he's going to fail against the villain. So, long story short is that this is this is it. This is the end. Look at all these timer cards though. I mean, do I want to do I is that do I want to do that? Do I want to not use in those timer cards? Of course not. It makes no sense in other words to trigger the end game yet when there are so many cards to be discovered. So, I'm I think I'm going to send Harsk up to join Kira for a little while and help her explore. I have no memory of whose turn it actually is. I, I, I feel like it was Harsk's turn and then I had her go, I think. Is that what I did? I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, no, because I think she had just discarded something. Yeah, I'm not sure. So I'm going to um, expend the timer deck. And I'm going to send him up to her. And then he is, and she is going to give him the glaive that she's no good at. She tries to use this glaive, and there's a plus four penalty to her attacks. It's not good for her. He is proficient with weapons, though, so he could use this glaive without a penalty. Now, he's got too many cards in his hand, but it's not the end of his turn. So, wait a minute. She can't give him a card on his turn. She'll give it to him next time around. Okay, that's fine. So he's got five cards in his hand. Oh, he hasn't explored yet. Let's explore. Archer. Well, there are plus... That's great. There are. There's a plus two to acquire an ally. So he can do that with his dexterity ranged ability, which gives him a plus... Three, plus three, where's the three? On the other side of the four, usually. Yep. Plus three. And that's a d8 for his ranged. He rolls a two. Of course he does. Oh, but wait. He gets a plus five because there's that global rule of adding two to your check to, um, to acquire an ally. So that's five, and then he rolled a two, that's seven. Amazingly, that still doesn't acquire this archer. Because she needed an eight to be to be convinced to join our, our party. It just doesn't seem possible, does it? He has a plus Ah, he has a plus three to his checks. Okay. So he had a three. Oh, is that what I said? Yeah. And then plus two, that's five. And then he rolled a, a two. 
Yeah, there's no way around it. He he fails. That's okay. I mean, he's he's got an archer. I mean, a you know a, a named archer who's probably actually better than that archer. So that's fine. Disappointing, but fine. End of his turn. He's got cards. Look, th- these are his cards to fight the villain with. So I am I'm going to just I'm gonna not discard anything. He might draw another blessing. It might be fine, but I think it's safer to to play safe. We're just trying to burn through timer deck right now, to be honest, and get a couple more cards into our our decks. So that's what we'll that's what we'll do. A uh, sword for for cleric for the cleric possibly. Uh, that's going to be a d a d six plus two. So two to acquire. So she needs to get a four on a d6, which she'll roll a two. Oh, she rolled a three. Uh, close, but not quite. So that goes away. Oh, at the beginning of her turn, before any of that happened, she's giving her Harsk uh, friend a glaive. There. Okay, so she's down to four cards. So she now... You know, she could give Harsk like some light armor too, really. Does he need our armor? I don't think so. He's got an amulet of protection. So she'll draw um draw up. She gets the Sahidran medallion. Discard this card to reduce damage by four. So she's boy, is she well well armed. Or armored, rather. She's got literally two things a chain mail, a chain mail shirt. She's got half elven half plate armor and a medallion good thing she's and a cure spell no less okay so ticking over a time deck card and it is now harsk's turn he's going to do the same thing as oh this is this would have been actually would it be nobody's got the arcane skill If you do not have this, the arcane skill, banish this card. Well, that's that's this group. Nobody's got arcane, so that was a waste. That's fine. We're just getting through cards. It's now um, Kira's turn. Wait, he's got six cards in his hand. So at the end of his turn, several things need to happen that I've already forgotten to do correctly. So because I have Shalelu and the Light Crossbow, I'm gonna he's gonna discard the Glaive for now, because all of his bonuses are gonna come from his ranged ability. The Glaive is nice, but but not not for the final battle. Now at the end of his turn, of course, because he's a Ranger, he gets to look at the top card of his location, which I've been forgetting to do. Okay, perfect. Now we know it's a it's. It's a monster. Well, as I've said, Kira is well armored, and she's got a quarter staff that adds a d6 to her not too shabby um, melee uh, uh, roll. So we'll we'll spend a card. I, I hate monsters because they do kind of eat up your turn, whether you beat them or not. If undefeated, succeeded a fortitude check. Okay, so nine. Nine to defeat this. And he's going up against Kira. So quarterstaff, um, for combat, reveal this card to roll your strength and melee plus a d6. Well, her strength and melee is a d6 plus two. So across two d6s now, she's looking to get a seven. So she just rolled a one and a three. So she rolled a total of six, meaning that she needs to take damage of three because it was a nine to defeat. She rolled a six, so that's three damage. Luckily, she has... um, half plate armor and she can recharge this to reduce combat damage by three so that is exactly what she will do put the armor at the bottom of her draw deck 
And I think there was a special condition if it's undefeated. If undefeated, succeeded a Constitution or Fortitude 8 check. Her Constitution Fortitude is a D6 plus 3. So she needs to succeed at a... Or she needs to roll a 5 on a D6. She rolled a 6. So she's okay. She does not have to discard any more cards. That's good. Okay. So that was the goblin dog that did not get defeated. So it doesn't get discarded, actually. Um, so putting it back in the deck and sort of shuffling it up nominally. That's pretty good, I think. To cut the deck. Okay. So. So that was her turn. Not a great turn for Kira that time around. That was kind of rough. Okay. Now it's Harsk's turn. Is she? Did she draw up to her hand? No, she did not. Wooden shield. More armor. Thank goodness. It's just what we needed. Harsk. Let's explore. Lightning touch. Magic arcane again. So this is another arcane spell, which is going to do nobody any good, so I'm not even going to bother trying to acquire it, to be honest. Take over a timer deck, and we'll do an exploration round for... See, now, once again, by the way, I just forgot to scry. So, Harsk's turn ended. I thought maybe by putting the card on top, I would. I, I didn't. So, anyway, Goblin Dog, it doesn't matter. Uh, so, this is, a, I mean, this is a repeat. I mean, this is the exact same thing. I mean, it's literally the same thing. So, we're going to try to defeat this thing with a... Bonus of two to melee. And roll a d6 plus a d6. So it's d6 and d6. This time is looking a lot better. So that's a six, seven, eight. So she can't roll anything less than a one on this d6. So she defeats the goblin dog. That's good. It's really good. Uh, I don't think she should have to draw. Yeah, she doesn't. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Um, I keep thinking I have this weird, this weird feeling that, yeah, I don't know. No, because she's got armor all over the place. Maybe she should cast Cure. Yeah, just arbitrarily cast Cure on Harsk. And all she has to do there, so she just reveals this card, choose a character, shuffle one D4, and then discard, unless she gets a Divine 8. So Divine is a, her D12 plus a plus 2. So she fails at that. So she has to discard this Cure spell. But she is gaining 2 cards. That was not a great experience, honestly. Okay, anyway, we I get to rescue two cards from Harsk's discard deck. Take two cards, put them at the bottom of his his deck, I guess. And so that's that's a cure spell. Not not amazing cure spell, but you know, it's sometimes that's what happens with cure spells. Okay, that's fine. So it's Harsk's turn. Flipping over a timer deck, exploring a little bit more. Here's the poison trap. So this is the henchman of this deck, so we've kind of reached the bottom of the barrel now, I guess. Henchman, dexterity, disable five. And if I fail, he's going to have to discard stuff. I don't really want to do that, so I would rather not fail this particular check. What are my options? Well, I've got a blessing, but I was going to use that for the... Oh, wait. Reduce damage, amulet of health, uh, of life. And this is... Um, this is not dependent upon being, like, combat damage. So I feel really good about that. So I'm just going to roll his, his dexterity. He fails, just like last time. If undefeated, discard the top card of your deck. 
All right, that's fine. It's better, in this case, better to discard from his deck than his hand, because his hand is set to what I want to bring to the battle with the villain. And then there's one other condition. Succeed at a Fortitude 7 check, or else be dealt some damage. His Fortitude is a d12 plus 2. So he rolled a three, four, five, so he fails. So he gets dealt one d4 plus one damage. Wow, this is they, they just rolling horribly. So I, oh wait, 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 wait. No, wait, I forgot. I have an amulet. So he rolled a five. He was supposed to get seven. And so I've rolled a d4. So there's a plus, d, one d4 plus one, so two points of damage. This amulet can be discarded to get rid of three three points of damage. So that is what he is doing. He has now discarded that card. Um, what did I just put his hand down for? There. Okay, perfect. So his hand is intact. I'm going to draw back up to a full hand. So he's got, got yet another crossbow, you know, just in case the first one like misfires or something. He's ready to go face this villain. And for his own safety at this point, I think that's exactly what he's going to do. So this was not defeated. Not that I would, not that I want to close this location necessarily. Um, but yeah, I think I'll probably send him out to safety uh, next time. And, and we are getting low. I mean, now we're, we're down to four. Actually, that's really scary. Um, I'm not sure what I'm what I've been thinking. I think I forgot that the timer still mattered. Because now I'm really nervous. Kira, I mean, am I too nervous to draw? That's that's the question. We've gotten a henchman. We've gotten a goblin dog. This could be a barrier. Yeah, you know what? I think, I think I'm just going to... Oh, she forgot to draw up. Of course she did. Of course she did. Okay, so... Just do it. Darn it. I do know that this is a barrier. Oh, wisdom check. Okay. If defeated, you can explore again. That that's they know they're talking my language. So, um her wisdom die is a D twelve. She needs an eight on a D twelve. She rolled a five. Of course. Of course she did. If undefeated Reset your hand and end your turn. Okay. So that's what a reset hand is. There was a card, remember, somewhere that was like, you can do such and such when you reset your hand. So I guess reset must mean, like, discard and draw all new cards. That's what I'm betting it means. And that's scary because look at that. She's only got one card health point left. Um... Oh, but she's got a Staff of Minor Healing and a bunch of Blessings and that Mending card. That would be hilarious. But it said end your turn, so that's that's the end of her turn. Okay. All right. So we're on, we're on track here. We are... We're running low on timer cards, though. We really are. And this is... This is not... You know, I'm, I'm being... I'm being a little bit risky for my own for my own preference. So we tick over a timer card. Harsk is going to go back over to the village house, and then he's going to turn over the villain card. That's the villain card. So I'm feeling good about this fight. The problem is... Oh, I didn't realize poison damage that may not be reduced. Yeah, but that's... Is that all poison damage, or is that just poison damage. It doesn't say this poison damage can't be reduced. I'm just wondering now, because remember I used that amulet of life. But this doesn't say that it cannot be reduced. It just says it's poison damage. And he is a dwarf. Dwarves are usually pretty resilient against poison. So I think, I think I'm think i okay. Um, Alright, so 
uh, steps. So, this is the villain, so this triggers the end game, pretty much. I mean, it doesn't necessarily. In theory, we could fight the villain. The villain could escape. However, I've split the party. Kira is at the town square. She's able, when a villain appears, to temporarily close a location by performing whatever it says you have to do to close the location. Banish a card from your hand. Banish is actually quite expensive because you have to just put a card back in the box. Luckily, she has lots of blessings. Put a blessing back in the box. They're pretty easy to come by. So this location is temporarily closed, meaning that she's standing in front of it, and if the villain tries to get away, he can't. So presumably, I guess, he probably tries to get away, sees that there's a scary-looking cleric holding up the 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 holy symbol of Saren Ray standing in front of at the at the entrance to the town square. And so he goes back to take his chances with the I don't know, I think equally scary looking Dwarven Ranger, personally, but yeah. So let's see what we got. We got a lot. Um so first of all, to start with, we have black cloth armor, which admittedly does not belong in this set, but I play with skull and shackles mixed in anyway because it's a lot of fun. If you're the only character at your location, he is, you may reveal this card to add one to your combat check. Okay, so he's got a one automatically added to his combat. Now, he also can recharge Shalelu Andosana, um, recharge it for a 1d4. Okay, so he's recharging... Shalalu. He's got a light crossbow, which adds a d8 to his check. If you're proficient, you can discard it to add another d4. Okay, well, he'll do that as well. I don't have another d4, so I'll just put a little blue token there for my own uh, memory. This one light crossbow is actually not useful. And then he can also cast a spell, uh, a blessing rather. Uh, he can discard this card to add one die to his check. Well, his dexterity die is a d8. I only have one d8, so I guess I'll put a token there. And because it's a ranged weapon, the crossbow that he's using, he gets a plus three. So his total bonus now is a plus four. So he's got 2d8, 2d4, sorry, he's got, oh yeah, and then for his blessing, he gets another d4. So in other words, just to review all of this to make sure that I've got it right, there's a d4 for, um, for Shalalu. She's giving him a d4. There's another d4 for discarding the crossbow card. There's a d8 for his ranged. A d8 for the crossbow. And a d8 for the blessing. So, he needs to roll a 7 across 3d8 and 2d4. Wait a minute. So he could still fail. If he rolls a 1 on every single die, then he could fail this check. So that's 1d4. He rolled a 6. He cannot fail now because even if he rolled a 1 on all of those die, he would have defeated this villain. And so the villain is defeated, and the location is immediately closed, and this round, this scenario, has been won. That means they both get a random weapon from the box. Each character draws a random weapon from the box. Okay, well, let me 
find my weapon deck here. This is for Kira, a dog slicer. So that'll be a d6 to her melee. That seems pretty good. Uh, and this one's for Harsk. It is a dagger plus one. And he can use dexterity with this. Well, that worked out really, really well, to be honest. That's, uh, if I felt like everyone got the, the weapons that they actually needed. I mean, I could have traded afterwards anyway, because between games you have to rebuild their decks and... You have a lot of flexibility with what you can do then. So that's that uh, That's that scenario. A lot of fun. I know that I was a little bit looser with the rules on that one than, than any other one, um, especially letting Harsk scry in retrospect. Uh, I, I wish I would do better at remembering to do that for him, but um, I feel fine about it. It was fun. That's the main thing. And... Uh, I just love exploring these places. I think that the mechanic of exploration in this card game is just, it's so good. Such a fun little mechanic, and uh, it really does feel very RPG-like. So the next, uh, the next scenario, the final scenario in this adventure, is Black Fang's Dungeon. So that's going to be exciting. Black Fang's Dungeon sounds kind of scary. We'll see what happens next time. Thanks for watching.